All right, so I'm gonna get this oil changed and I'm gonna get this sample off to the lab and I will check back with you guys. What is going on my friends? I am back with some more information for you. In this video, I'm gonna go over an oil analysis that was done by Blackstone Laboratories. Let's go ahead and see what's in this report. So this oil sample was taken from my 2024 KTM 500 EXCF. I was using the Motorex Crosspower 4T 10W50 oil and the interval was done at 975 miles. And I can hear you guys now. Why did you not go all the way to 1,000? Well, pretty simple. It's just the way the schedule worked out. I needed to get the oil change done. But with that, you should know that given the way the bike was ridden during that in interval, there would have been no significant change on this report. And we'll get back to that in a minute here. So let's scroll down and see what they've got in the text for us. All right, other than a low viscosity, which isn't concerning to begin with, nothing warranted a highlight in your KTM's first report. A low viscosity isn't unusual for this engine type due to harmless shearing, and the TVN total base number shows plenty of active additive remaining. Wear metals are in good shape compared to averages, which are based on just a 700 mile run. Only copper read a bit high, and that's likely due to lingering wear in washing out. Try going about 1,200 miles before taking the next sample, and we'll go from there. Nice report. Okay, so that's good news, you guys. So let's get a little bit of context just so we understand. Because here's the thing, you guys I know that this has been done before. I know that other people have given some information on this with higher numbers than the interval I did. But it's one of those deals where I needed to do it for myself so I could understand my riding style, my conditions, all that stuff, and just kind of get a baseline so I know where to go with for me moving forward. Plus, you guys get additional data from that, so we're all good, all right? So again, if we start up here on the top left, we see um, in this first column, we've got miles, hours on oil. That's the 975. The hours weren't listed here, but I know that the Runtime for this oil interval was 28.6 hours. We've got the total miles that were on the unit when I did that, took that sample, which is 1,791. We've got the date that I took the sample and makeup oil. Okay, so guys, pay, pay close attention to this one. This was a clerical error on my behalf. I entered the value of 1.2 quarts on an information sheet that went out with this sample. It was worded a little bit differently than makeup oil on that particular sheet that they gave me. And um, it was just misinterpreted and I sent it over like that. But basically that is um, the amount of oil that goes in the sump of the engine when you change the oil. Uh, just a clerical error, I reached out to them and it's not gonna have a significant impact on the numbers that you're seeing here or their assessment and they have added that update to my file to know that there was no makeup oil added. And just to be clear for any of you that don't know, makeup oil added would mean that you, at some point during the cycle of that interval, added fresh oil to the machine, right? Like whether you lost some or you took some out for some reason, you know, prior to doing this sample and then added fresh oil to used oil, that would essentially skew your numbers. So it's important to know that, you know, if you guys do an analysis on oil, it's just to be aware of whether or not you added any oil. In this case, that number is incorrect. There was no oil added to it. So we're just, all these numbers you're seeing are what they are for the same batch of oil. So I'm not gonna try to, you know, go through all this for you guys. Obviously you can pause the screen and look at these numbers if you want to. But um, there they are for you. Obviously, based on the laboratory, they didn't see anything that was far enough out of line to warrant any type of warning of any kind. So they, they, they're happy with it. I think most of us that have been researching this subject would kind of have expected this result. And I should also mention that the bike was ridden at probably what I would call a medium duty for those 975 miles. So there was a lot of commuting to work, so city streets, freeways, highways, and I also did some recreational riding off road. 
most of it was pretty casual, but I, I do occasionally get into some rougher terrain, some more technical stuff, slow speed, and you know, when I get I get those opportunities where I can just rip through the gears and do some full throttle runs, you know, I'll have those and do a little bit of fun. But but overall the bike was not raced on this batch of oil. It was not abused. So this is probably somewhere in the medium category. I think most people would consider that riding. So let's scroll down a little bit more so you guys can see the remainder of this page. Again, I'll just do that so you guys can see it. I'm not going to try to go over all that and spend too much time on it. But there it is. So anyways, you guys, that's kind of about a thousand mile interval. Just to add to the information that's out there on the interwebs about how far you can go on these KTM brand 500s in between and again based on their recommendation and it's pretty much what i was expecting is i'm going to go about 1200 miles so you guys can expect another report that will be coming and then based on what i get in that report i'll know where to go for any future testing so there you guys go and expect another one in the near future here i will see you in the next one